Okay, so let's get started. I know not everyone is here yet, but that's okay. Um, so welcome. Um, I hope you've been, you know, continuing to do your English in your own time with all the extra materials that you have. Um, but here in class, we do a lot of exercises together, which is good. So we're going to continue straight from where we left uh, last lesson. So if you remember, we've been looking at um, comparing. You know how we talked about that this country has better touristic places. Um, you know, Brazil has better beaches, for example, or, um, you know, then Colombia, that uh, Australia has the best transportation in the world. I don't know. I'm just making it up. The best food, the best whatever. So we're comparing. We're comparing places. That's what we've been doing. But now we are going to talk about when we are in a place, how do we use money when we are somewhere? So we're going to be at 7D, travel money. So that's what we're looking at, travel money. Okay, so let's talk about some words that we use when we talk about money. We have, uh, for example, borrow cash. So that means like I take money from someone, but I must give it back. Borrow cash. Buy a ticket. Change dollars. So change. Maybe I have, yeah. Maybe I have, not just to give to someone like change, but maybe I have pesos and I want to exchange it for Australian dollars. Lend coins. So this is different than borrow. Borrow means I take it, but lend means you give to someone. So you're going to give someone, you're going to lend someone money. Coins. Pay credit card. So, you know, it's very common. Now we pay, tap and pay, credit card. Uh, spend money. So we looked at this word spend. You remember we spend time with someone and we spend money. It means like I buy something. I put my money somewhere to buy something, to do something with my money and take out money. So that's used especially if I'm with the machine, the ATM machine, or if I go to the bank and I can take out money from my card. So let's put these action words that have to do with money into these sentences. So we'll do it together. So the first one is I need to something some something into pounds. Now remember pounds is used in the UK. So in Australia, we say dollars. So imagine it says dollars. So I need to, which one would you use? Change dollars, not just pounds. Change some, some dollars. Some That's correct. Yeah, into some, some pounds. So this is someone coming from Australia uh, or the UK traveling to the United Kingdom. Because I need to change some dollars to pounds, into pounds. Number two, did you did you spend a lot of money on that dress? So it does mean like, did you pay a lot for that dress? Did you spend a lot of money? Um, did you spend? Yeah, did you pay like a lot of money for that dress? Number three, there's a cash machine. We can, yes. So anytime you look at a cash machine, you're taking out money. So we can take out some money from there. Number four, you can pay by credit or cash. Credit or cash. So you have an option. You can pay by credit or cash. 
Number five, the machine doesn't take notes. Can you lend me some money, coins? Because it doesn't take cash. So can you give to me some coins? That's what it means. Lend to me means can you give me some coins? Because the machine doesn't accept, it doesn't take notes. Yeah. Well, borrow is when um, I can give someone something, but they must give it back. So, uh, or I can borrow something from someone. But lend, uh, maybe you don't get, lend is also, I lent him my car. Yeah, lend is the same. I lend someone, I give to someone something. Um, they're both the same. But it depends how you say it. So I borrowed. You don't say I lented something from someone. You say I borrowed this from him. So, for example, maybe Diego gave me this laptop. I can say I borrowed um, this laptop. But I don't say I lent. Only when I give to someone, I say, oh, I lent Diego my laptop. So when I receive it, I have to say I borrowed. But when I give to someone, I say lent. But it's the same action because you give it to someone or you receive it, but they must give it back, or you receive it back. So only when I receive it, I say, uh, when I have it, I say I borrowed. So I borrowed this laptop, but I lent Diego my phone, for example. That's probably the best way. That's okay. So that's why this person is asking, can you lend me some coins? Can you give to me? So we have... Clayton and Andres Hi, online today. Hi, teacher. I'm Hi, not sure your, vo your voice, I can never hear you, um, Andres. I don't know if you're speaking. My volume is, maybe you have a problem with the volume. You're, I can never hear you. Uh, okay. Number... Six, I think. Can I borrow? Because you remember, I want to take it. So, can I borrow some cash? Yeah. Can I borrow some cash and pay you back later? So, can I take some cash from you and pay you back later? Number seven, they want to buy a train ticket they want to buy a train ticket we buy the what hey uh jillian sorry the train the, the ticket yes yes and bills Bill and the, can I get the bill, please? Can I get the um, check. check? Yeah, exactly. Same. Yeah. Okay. Let's listen to a conversation. And we're going to match A to C with, sorry, one to three. Match the conversation. So you're going to hear three conversations. Which people are where? Are they in a currency exchange office? So that means where I change my money. Are they in a bank? Are they in a shop? Maybe a grocery shop, a clothing shop. Are they at a cash machine? Or it's also called an ATM machine. ATM. Are they in a post office? Are they in a car park or in a hotel? So these are the locations. Where are the people in, in a three conversation? Just write a one, two, and three when you know where the location is. So, okay, let's listen to number two. Book 72, Unit 7D, Conversation 1. Hello, can I change $100 into euros? 
the yes, of course. One moment. One hundred dollars is eighty-nine euros. Mm. Okay. Can you give me the euros in tens? For sure. Ten, twenty, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty. So where is that conversation happening? Which is Which like the voice? Yes, please. And could I have it in a bag, please? Certainly. It's 12 euros. Here's my credit card. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can only take cash. Oh, no. I don't have any. Don't worry. There's a bank with a cash machine around the corner. Oh, thanks. Conversation three. Oh no, it's two pounds for parking. I only have a ten pound note. So what's the problem? The machine takes coins. Could I borrow the money? I'm afraid I don't have any coins. Who no, no, it takes credit cards. I haven't got a credit card with me. It's okay, I have. Great, I can pay you back later. Don't worry, I can pay. Okay, so don't worry if you didn't um, realize where they were because we are going to hear the conversation again. So the first conversation, where were they? In a currency exchange office, 1A. So conversation one was in a currency exchange office. They were changing their money. So they were in a different country and they want to change their money. Where was conversation two? Shop. In a shop. Two C. And the last one, cash machine? No. In a car park. Yes. The last conversation. Final conversation? Yes. Uh, the exchange cash machine, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cash machine, he needed coins, I think, because he was in a car park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is the machine. But oh, what does it mean? Um, Automatic transfer machine. But I, let me check. I'm not 100%. Uh, yeah, what does AT oh, stand for? Automatic yeah. automated teller machine, automatic teller. transfer machine. We were close, we were close. Yeah, yeah, they're all called ATM machines, but they're by different banks. But they're all ATM machine. So that's like the machine. ATM, you'll see like this ATM. Bank, ATM. Uh, yeah, every bank has an ATM. Every bank. Yeah. And it's good because you need to find your bank so you cannot be charged. Okay, conversation three was in a car park, 3F. So now let's listen to the conversation again. And for number three, we have the actual conversations. You're going to fill in the missing words. So now you can read the conversations, the same conversation we heard before. Okay, so for number three, let's read, uh, read those conversations as we listen. Truck 72, unit 7B, conversation one. Hello, can I change $100 in euros? Yes, of course. One moment. $100 is 89 euros. Okay, can you give me the euros in tens? For sure. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Very fast. Yeah. <laughs> 
Conversation two. Would you like to buy this? Yes, please. And can I have it in a bag, please? Certainly. It's 12 euros. Here's my credit card. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can only take cash. Oh, no. I don't have any. Don't worry. There's a bank with a cash machine around the corner. Oh, thanks. Conversation three. Oh, no. It's two pounds for parking. I only have a ten pound note. So, what's the problem? The machine takes coins. Could I borrow the money? I'm afraid I don't have any coins. Oh, look. It takes credit card. I haven't got a credit card with me. It's okay. I have. Great. I can pay you back later. Don't worry. I can pay. So I think we can hear it one more time, just to be sure. Okay. Truck 72, Unit 7D, Conversation 1. Hello, can I change $100 into euros? Yes, of course. One moment. $100 is 89 euros. Okay. Can you give me the euros in tens? Sure. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Conversation 2. Would you like to buy this? Yes, please. And can I have it in a bag, please? Certainly. It's 12 euros. Here's my credit card. Oh, I'm sorry. But I can only take cash. Oh, no. I don't have any. Don't worry. There's a bank with a cash in the room. Oh, thanks. Conversation three. Oh, no. It's two pounds for parking. I only have a £10 note. So, what's the problem? The machine takes coins. Could I borrow the money? I'm afraid I don't have any coins. Oh, no. It takes credit card. I haven't got a credit card with me. It's okay. I have. Great. I can pay you back later. Don't worry. I can pay. Okay, so let's go through it together. So don't worry if you haven't, if you missed some of them, we will talk about them. Okay, we have conversation one. A will be Edward and B will be uh, Jose. Hello. Can I answer? One dollars. Dollars. Euro into Euro. euros. Euros. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it's got. Uh, it's. Yes, of course. One more. Five hundred dollars is eighty-nine euros. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you give me to uh, the euros. In Can you euros. give me the euros in 10? Sure. Hmm? 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70. Perfect. So the first word was course, of course. That's like saying yes, definitely, yes, sure. Of course, yes. This number two was can. So remember we use can and then the main verb. So can is just a helper verb. So can you give, give is the main verb. Can you give me the euros in tens? And number three, sure. Yes, of course, sure. They're all the same words. Okay, conversation two. A, this is a bit of a longer one. Uh, we'll go with um, 
Hey, David. Gustavo. And B will be Santiago. Yeah, wood, work. Wood, work. Wood. Wood. No, wood. Work. No, wood. You sound like you're saying good. <laughs> work. Work. Wood. <laughs> yeah. Wood. Wood. Much better. Would you like to buy this? Yes, please. Can I have yes, please? And can and is it can? Is I think it's could. And could can, can I have in the bag please? No, could you could it does make sense to say can, but she said could. And could I have it in a bag, please? So could. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you heard can, but the you can say can as well. It's the same. So certainly. Now I know you maybe you have a bit of spelling mistake, but if you got it correct, you heard it, certainly. That means sure. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Here's. Here. Yeah, here's my credit card. I don't have any. Yeah, so it's connected, so there's. I know it is, there is, but because the word is connected, so you must say it as there's a bank with a cash machine around the corner. Good. So let's look at number six where he says, oh, I'm sorry. That's like saying, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's an it's he's trying to say he can't help, he can't do the credit card. Oh, I'm sorry, but I only take cash. So only is a very important word in this sentence because it changes everything. So we have to stress that word. I'm sorry, I can only take cash. Do you see how my voice only? Because mm. I want the person to understand. That's the most important word in all my sentence. I can only take cash. But good. Okay, uh, conversation three. Um, we have A, Diego, and B will be Wilda. Oh, no. It's two pounds from Friday. I only had a 10 pound note. So what's the problem? Mm-hmm. The machine take coins. Takes. The machine takes coins. Could I borrow the money? Yeah. Could I borrow money from you? Yeah. Right. I don't have the money. It takes. No, it. There's no S with the it. It takes. Yes. I haven't got a credit card left with me. Yeah. Great. I can pay you back later. Don't worry. Okay, good. So the word to look for here is could. Remember, could is not the main verb. It's a helper verb, the same as can. So could I borrow? Borrow is the main verb. Could I take, it means. And number eight, I'm afraid. That's the same as saying I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't have any coins. Okay, good. So let's look at requesting. Requesting means when I ask for something. So, you know, maybe you want to request to change your course. Maybe you want to request to change your plane ticket. Um, it's asking. That's what it means. So I'm requesting for something. So we use words like uh, can or could at the start of the sentence. 
Um, so it doesn't matter which one, they're both the same. Can, subject, and main verb. So remember, this is the main verb here. So you can ask for it, whatever you want. Can I change my ticket? Can I see you tomorrow? Can I buy you a drink? Uh, could I... Um, could I have the weekend off? Uh, could I, whatever. So anything that I need to ask, it's not the main verb, it's just a helper verb. So we say can or could, they're both the same. Subject, so if it's, you're asking about you, can I? If I'm with someone, okay, it would be can we? Can we change our tickets, please? Whatever. Uh, can you give me? Uh, before I get to can you give me, actually, no, let's go with that one. So can you give me whatever? Um, can you give me um, your phone number? Yes. Can you give me your phone number? Yeah. Who's? Oh, sorry. I was hearing. I didn't know where. <laughs> yeah. Can I get? Yeah. Can I get? A, can I? Can you give me? Um, yeah, can you give me a help? Can I get? Well, give me is like they are giving you something. But sometimes if you say, can I get? Um, can I get a ticket, please? Can you give me a ticket, please? Yeah, they can be, both be the same. Yeah. Can I get? Uh, well, it. No, no, it's not about polite or not. It's a casual way of asking for something. Well, it's, it could be formal as well. Uh, formal is probably may. Oh, may I get, may you give me is probably more formal. But no, can or could is just casual. Yeah, because the formal one is probably may, M-A-Y. May you give me, yeah, that's very formal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. What the difference uh... In no, there's no difference. No, no, exactly the same. Whichever one you want, you could say there's, you know. Yeah. Uh, you don't borrow, you borrow an object. <laughs> I think if you want to talk about a person, uh, sometimes, yeah, some people say, can I borrow him for a moment? Um, I would say, um, so you need to take him away, like from the conversation or something. I would say, uh, I would say, oh, can I speak to him for a moment? I would make it more like that. Uh, then I would say, yes, can I borrow, can I get some, um, are you specifically, you want that person? Then I would say, yeah, can I, well, I would just talk directly to him and say, could you help me? But if not, if you're talking to someone else, because then you want him, then yes, I would say, oh, can I, um, uh, can I get him to help me? Get him to help me. I think that's a bit of, of a better one. Can I get him to help me? So you're not talking to him directly but to someone else, then I would say, can I get him to help me? Or again, could he help me? Um, that's how I would ask. If you want, but yeah, can I borrow him for a moment? Um, but then it's like asking permission because maybe you're talking to the boss of that person. Then I would say, yes, could I borrow him for a moment? Or could I get him to help me? I would go more for that one. Could I get him to help me? So that's like, you're welcome. That's like this. Could I get him or could be her? Could I get him to, do you need, is it more help to help me? Uh, could I get him to help me with something? Now I might add like, that's a bit more casual. Could I get him to help me with something? Yeah. It's he and her. Yes. It's been? Yes. It's no, him or her is only for if it's a male or female. So an object is not a male or female. So we say it. 
It's an it, yeah. Is that what you mean? Like him or her is only for people because him is a male and her is a female. So only people. If it's an object, it. So right now this bottle is him. Well, this bottle is hers. Yeah, yeah. So that's, we looked at a couple of units. I don't know which unit. You have to go back. That's possessive, uh, I think, unit one. You have to look back, yeah, all the way at unit one. When we were talking about this is his, hers, unit two, sorry. Go back to unit two and you'll find somewhere in there. Uh, but okay, so could I have is another way of asking. Could I have some bread, please? Could I have two glasses, please? Um, could I have my, could I have your number? So could I get or could I have is really very similar. Could I get or could I have? And then you're asking about something. Could I get, could I have? Could I get some information? Um, okay, so that's how we ask. So when we respond, we say yes. Um, so try and always say yes or no first. Um, if you do say yes, you can then say yes, certainly. Yes, sure. Yes, of course. You could say sure, no problem. Absolutely. You could say, all good. Yeah, cool. That's very casual. If it's you're saying no, so you, somebody's asking you for something and you want to say no, it's always polite to say, oh, I'm sorry. No, I cannot give you my book. Or I'm afraid I cannot. I apologize. I cannot. Or you just say no because I need it. Or absolutely not, if they ask for something and you're like, absolutely not, no way. <laughs> so it depends what they're asking for. So let's look at some examples. Uh, can I order the special dish? Sure. Or can I know what the special is? Yeah. Can I pay for the meal with my credit card? Yeah. Can I purchase or buy a ticket with cash? Can I borrow your phone to call my mother? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry about that. So this is someone saying no, but I don't have that much money. Maybe my friend can help you. I heard that you have a drink. Sure. So this was some conversation. <laughs> Have to think about it. There's another way to say no. Okay, so everybody create one question with can, could, subject verb, or could I get, or could I have. So imagine you you want to ask for something. So write one sentence uh, each. Each. Mm -hmm. So everybody write one sentence and we'll look at your sentence. So here were some examples. Can I borrow your phone? Can I purchase a ticket with cash? Can I book it online? So some people buy something. They say, oh, can I book it online? That's another good one. Can I book it online? So create, yeah, or could. Sorry? Can I eat beef burgers? Can I what? Eat beef burgers. You're asking someone if you can eat it? Um, 
it, it's a pretty strange question because it means you need permission to eat a beef burger. I would be asking, can I order? Like, mm -hmm. do you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. A beef burger. Yes, exactly. So not can I eat, but can I have a yeah. beef burger? Because you saw it on the menu. So can I have a beef burger? Thanks. Yeah. Can I book it online? Can I borrow your phone? Can I purchase a ticket? Yes. Can I pay for the meal with my credit card? Can I order the special dish? Okay, so make a sentence with can or could. So here are some examples, can or could, or yes, or you could do could I get or could I have something. So for Diego, it would be could I have the beef burger, please? Could I get the beef burger, please? So remember, you're asking for something, maybe a ticket, a drink. Whatever you buy, maybe you're buying a new phone or you're buying uh, some accessories. Maybe you're buying a book. Maybe you're buying some pens or think about what you buy. What do you need to purchase to buy? And we're just asking if we can buy that thing. Can I get new beef for beef? Can I get? Can I have the beef burger, please? Yeah, the beef burger, just one. New headphone, please. A new headphone. Yeah. yeah. Can I get exactly? Yeah. Can I get a new headphone? Yeah. Uh. So you, it's like you're ordering something. Can I get a coffee? That's a very common one. How many people drink coffee? They're like, can I get a small latte, please? That's a good one. Can I get a small latte? So remember, could or can I have or get or get is the same as something. So I said latte. Okay, so that's the rules. So I hope you used one of them. Make sure that you, the one in the pink, that your sentence follows that rule. So make sure your sentence starts with either can or could. They're both the same. Subject, so same as here, we have a subject. So the first one is can I buy, can I see, can I visit can I book the second one is just showing that, that you can say get or have this is with a noun so this is uh, a noun but this one focuses on the main verb that's the difference okay let's start listening to your examples um and online just write them in the chat box um edward yeah can you lend me the Scissors, please. Yep. Good. Yep. Uh, Santiago. What? The what? R-O-U-T-E? 
Yeah. Um, are you drive? I don't understand the situation. Are you um, like you're in a? So you want to change your deet, your plane ticket detail? Yeah. yeah. So I would say, can I change my flight? Uh, my flight route. Yeah, my flight route. So maybe you've booked a ticket from Adelaide to Melbourne, but you want to change it, right? So you say, can I change my flight route? Is that what you mean? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Can I change my flight route? Good. So that's asking. Um, Italo. Not yet? Okay, I'll give you one more minute. Diego. Can I have the Yes, can I have the beef burger, please? Um, Ronan. Can I borrow your laptop to get my Yes, can I borrow your laptop to check my emails? Good. Can I borrow your laptop to check my emails? Silvio, you have a sentence? Can I use your bicycle? Yeah? Can I use your car? Can I use your bicycle? Good. Wilda. Remember, you can say could or you could say get or have with a noun. So, yeah? Sorry, can you give me a bottle of water? Yep, good. Can you give me a bottle of water? Uh, Min. Your book. Yep, perfect. Can I borrow your book? Jose. Can I listen to my favorite CD? Yeah. So maybe you're driving with someone. You're saying, well, can I listen to my favorite CD? Yeah. Um, Fernando. Can I change? Yeah, these shorts. I think extra. Do you want to change them for a different size or different color? Yeah. Can I change these shorts for? I would say for a different what? What do you need? Uh, can I get me a sandwich? Um, can I get a sandwich? So you don't have to use me. I would say, can I get a sandwich? So if you look at the rule, can I get, and then you put the noun. So you don't put me. So you put, um, so plus noun. So there's no me. You use the first rule. Um, can I buy a pizza on the app from my cell phone? Yes. So can I buy a pizza on the app from my cell phone is American. We just say on my phone or mobile phone. Can I buy a pizza on the app from my phone? Yeah. So don't say cell phone. That's only in America. We say phone or mobile phone. Good. Any more? Um, Gustavo? Yes, Valeria? Can you borrow your car to go to the beach? Can I? Good. So can I borrow your car to take to the beach? To take to the beach? Yeah. Because I want it. Can I borrow your car? Good. Gustavo. Yes. Could I get a long black, please? Good. 
So could I get a long black? Um, David, it's uh, like coffee, black coffee. David? Yes, can I borrow your sharpener? I'll put that one. Can I borrow your sharpener? Yep. Um, is that everyone? Yes, yes. Could I own your bank account? Could I know what? Could I own your bank account? Could I, what's the main action? Could I own and own? Uh, could I have? Yeah. Own, yeah. It's, I would say, like, could I have your bank account? You kind of, ha could I, yeah, could I have your bank account? I would say, yeah. In, yeah. Can I get or your bank account number? Sometimes we need someone's bank account number. Can I have your bank account number? Can I get this burrito? Um, if you're looking at a menu and you're pointing, yes. But can I get a burrito, please? Is more better. Unless you're saying this, like you're pointing this burrito, then I would say, can I get a burrito, please? Okay, good. So we know how to say can or could. Um, and we could say get or have. Okay, and if we wanted to respond, so where we've practiced number four with responding, how would you say yes or no to someone? Do you know any other words? I've written some here. Do you know any other words? Yes, certainly, of course. Does anyone have any different ways to say yes or no? No. They're pretty, I mean, there's, yeah, these are the responses. Yeah. Not yet? Yeah, not yet. Maybe they need to wait for something. So no, not yet. Um, okay, good. So we've been able to talk about um, money. So if we need to change our money, borrow money, lend money, we know that we have ways of asking, requesting. Uh, let's go to the next page. We're going to go to the end of the road. So very interesting, the end of the road. We've got an article that we're going to read. Now, a travel blog um, is like, for example, if people write on the – remember how we talked about what um, – was it this unit or the unit before when we talked about life logging? That was from uh, Unit 6. So life logging is a way, we don't write diaries anymore. So what do we do? We go on the internet and we share a blog or we go on Instagram and post a picture and write, you know, um, something with it. That's a way of sharing as if like it's a diary. So it's called um, life logging. But for people who travel, have you heard of vlogging? Travel blog. So it's like, it's on YouTube a lot. I think like I remember on YouTube, you will find a lot, a lot of, um, let me just go here first and show you. Vlogging is like people who write, they do travel, they go around to places and they take a video and they post it on YouTube and it's like they, you know, cut, they talk about the place. That's called vlogging. So vlogging, see? So they, they just travel and they talk about the place where they were. So we're looking at a travel blog. A travel blog is a website where people write about it. So not a video, but where we read about it. So imagine a travel um, blog is like this. You can see there's heaps of people. This is a nice one. This is a travel blog. So this is somebody, her name is, um, I don't know how to get rid of that. So her name is World of Wonderlust. And you can see she 
so I can't get rid of that. She goes to many places. She adds all these travel information. Where did you see it? Yeah. No, because I can't see you. Thank you. So travel costs in Europe. This is a travel blog. You see how she's writing? And she's added photos. See? And she's talking about something of her experience. Denmark. This is a travel blog. So it's a website where somebody writes about their experience. So um, we're going to pretend that this is the same thing. This is on the internet. We're reading a travel blog. So let's read it together and then we'll answer the questions. Okay, so you can follow, um, repeat after me. So yesterday, yesterday was the final day of my bus journey from Lhasa to Kodari at the border with Nepal. It's the highest road in the world. Now, did you notice the comparative with the EST to the adjective high? Because he said it's the highest road, not compared to this one, to some Miguel's, but in the whole world. It's the highest road in the world. So EST, we add it to the adjective. It's the highest road in the world. And it's also a very long journey. We travelled for three days through the Himalayas and you could see the north side of Everest. In the afternoon, we were only five kilometres from Kodari. And suddenly, the bus stopped. The driver got out and looked at the engine. For the next three hours, he tried to fix the engine. Some of the other passengers got angry. But he couldn't start the bus. Finally, all the passengers got out and started to walk to the border. I felt sorry for the bus driver because he looked sad and lonely. But I also wanted a good hotel and a hot meal. So I left the bus to and walked to Kodari. Later that night, the bus arrived in town. Good. Okay, so we can see there's the image of the bus. And where are they? They are in Nepal, the country that's next to India. So let's answer the questions. I'll give you maybe two minutes to reread it and answer questions one to six. And we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so two minutes. Okay, let's go through the answers together. So where was the writer? Remember, the writer is the person who is writing this travel blog. Where were they? Yeah. So if I want to make a full sentence, they were going from Lhasa to Kodari. Were. How many days was the journey? Three days. What could the passengers, that means the people in the bus, what could the passengers see? 
yes, good full sentence. The passengers could see because could is the action in the past for can. So they could see the north side of Everest. What happened to the bus? The bus broke down. Stop just means like it stopped, but broke down is different. Broke down means you can't start it. But stop just means like it stopped, you know, from. With, yeah, so the bus stopped because of some or due to, you can say the bus stopped due to engine problems. Look at yeah. the, the engine. He, he, the bus stopped because the bus driver wanted to look at the engine. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, he didn't just want to look at it because it, the engine it broke down. down. So we've got to make an action that's more stronger. He didn't just stop. He didn't just look at the engine. The, the bus broke down. Uh, did that say that here? Because the bus couldn't start. So you could say uh, because the bus couldn't start. Uh, okay. Who tried to fix the engine? Yeah. yeah, the bus driver tried to fix the engine. Full sentence. How did the passengers feel? They were angry. Yes, for a full sentence. They were angry. Why did the writer feel sorry for the bus driver? Because the bus driver looked sad and lonely. Because he felt sad, uh, he felt sorry for the bus driver because the bus driver looked sad and lonely. And why did the writer walk to the border? They wanted a hotel and a hot meal. Yep. They wanted a hotel and food. They didn't want to wait on a bus. They wanted a hotel and a hot meal. So that's why they walked, because the bus doesn't work. It wouldn't work. It broke down. So good. That was a good little story, um, simple story using the past tense um, and you know, we saw some comparative in there, the highest road. Um, I think that's the only comparative we have. Yeah, so that's the only comparative. So make sure you took note, the highest road. So let's look now at these words, so and because. Now, I know they sound simple, but sometimes people use them wrong. So these words, so and because, they are in the middle of a sentence. You never start a sentence with uh, because. You can start a sentence with so, but just for now, they are in the middle of a sentence. How do we know when to use them? If you're giving a reason, then you say comma, so, what is the action? So, for example, I, I wanted a good hotel and a hot meal. That's his reason. So what did he do? So what's the action that he did? I left the bus and walked to Kadari. If I say the action first, then I say, um, because in the middle, and then the reason. So what action did I do? I felt sorry for the bus driver. That's an action. It's a feeling action. So the action is I felt sorry for the driver, and I want to say why. So I say because he looked sad. So we've got these words, as I said, because and so, and they go in the middle of the sentence. So I might uh, actually change the colors here. So because, and so. Okay. 
Okay, so it says here, which sentence gives the reason, then the action? The one with so in the middle. Yeah, can you see that? The one with so. Hmm. So 2A, so I would say 1B. One 1B. One yep, the one with so in the middle. That gives the reason. Why and then the action. Which sentence gives the action, then the reason? A. So 2A, the first sentence with because in the middle. So remember, because and so, they go in the middle. Uh, when do you use so on because? So we talked about it. It depends if you're starting your sentence with the action. I did this action because something else. Or if you say the reason first, why something happened, and then you say what action you did. So that's when we know how to use it. No, the, the answer for number three is if I use the action first, then I use because, or if I use the reason first, then I use so. But remember, there's a comma here. So is like then. Uh, yeah, and so then I did something. Yeah. So then it's like you have to can't just say without so. So then would be good, yeah, you know. It started um, to rain uh very heavily so then i quickly ran into a shop so yeah so i ran into a shop it started to rain heavily then i ran into a shop be careful because then sounds like you're, you're doing um it's one action i went to this to uni and then i went to work and then i went to sleep then is used when you change actions but you can't really replace it in this way because we need so because it shows us I'm still in the same situation. It was raining so much, so I quickly got an umbrella. You know, I'm still in the same situation. Not I went here and then I went there and then I went there and then I went there. So just be careful. You cannot replace it. And as you say, so then, if you want. So that's how we use them. Now, don't worry. We're, we're going to put it into practice with these sentences. So which one would you would you use, so or because? We called a taxi. That sounds like an action. I, I called a taxi. If it's an action, because we were late for the meeting. So number one, because. The train was late. So we waited on the platform. Which one's the action? The waiting. The train was late is a reason, like the, the train was late, it was raining, um, it was so cold. That's not a, yeah, no, that's good, yeah. Yes, yes. But not because, you don't put a comma before. Yes, comma, so this happened. And it allows you when you speak it, you know that there's breaks. So when you say, it was raining so much, so I didn't go to work. You see how like that comma, you have to have not, it was raining so much so I didn't go to work. That's way too one big sentence fast. It was raining so much, so I didn't go to work. Number three, we had a drink of water. That sounds like an action. I had a drink of water because it was a hot day. Number four, it started raining. That sounds like a reason. Something's happening. So they ran home. So think of your reason as why or something happening. Something happening and then you did an action. Uh, I wanted to sleep. That's like a... Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm doing something. I wanted to sleep because I stayed at a hotel. 
uh, sorry, so. so. Yes, if you see a comma, so. But now it could have been I wanted to sleep because I, no, so that doesn't make sense with because. I wanted to sleep, so I stayed at a hotel. So I wanted to sleep is how um, something happening. He was feeling very tired. It's like saying I was tired, so I stayed at a hotel. Maybe for some reason it's loud in their house. We hired a car. That sounds like an action that I did because there was no trains or buses. So because I needed some money. So I looked for a cash machine. Yeah. But also remember why. It's something something happened. Like it's raining, it's um I wanted money. What action did you do? My friend lent me ten dollars because I didn't have any cash. So the action was in the beginning. My friend gave me, lent me. Okay, one more exercise before the break. Uh, again, don't worry if you haven't practiced it because we've got more exercises coming. Uh, let's pick which one. Now we've got and, because, so, but, uh, because. So let's have a look. I'll give you two minutes. Sorry. <laughs> so we need a break. Good sentence. We are falling asleep, so we need a break. I'm losing energy, so we need a break. Mm -hmm. But you can also switch it around the other way. Um, I'm going on a break because I'm starting to feel tired. So you can really say the same action. Just depends. Are you starting with the action that you did? Or what happened? I'm, I was feeling tired, so I had a break. Here are just some other examples. I love Spanish, so I traveled to Colombia to learn the language. I studied English because I wanted to live in Australia. Okay, we can do it together. So it should be, you shouldn't have to think that much. You should really read it and start to feel which one sounds right. So I'll read it slow because in case if you still haven't finished, it was the end of our family holiday. Because we were very tired. Um, I reckon it could be and. I don't know why I have here. It was the end of our family holiday and we were very tired. I think and because it's really not, that's not why you really, it sounds like two different actions. It, it came to the end of our trip. You know how some people say, I spent one month somewhere and I was very, or I worked 12 hours today and I was very tired. Sounds like an ant. You know, it was the end of our trip and we were tired. We had a long car journey from Switzerland to England. So we left early in the morning. There's no but. But is only like, um, you know, I like coffee, but I 
but I don't really like tea, you know, like, but is only if I change what I said before, or I want to say something against what I said before. Um, like I like coffee, but not with sugar. So really it's so here. We had a long car journey from Switzerland to England, so we left early in the morning. The journey was easy at first because there wasn't much traffic at the time of day. So because. But at midday, so they're saying something against it, we need, yeah. <laughs> I remember, pero. That's American English. So Australian English, uh, so you mean and? Uh, but ah uh, yes yeah um not all the time because if I just write a sentence here um like I love coffee but not with sugar not really see um it's not really a rule why did they do it here the journey was easy at first yeah, I don't know. It's not it's not necessary. I can put it and it's still correct. I don't know if it's maybe more UK English, but you don't really need it. It's more important only when you do comma. So I love coffee. So I had one today. I don't know. That's more important. Because if I take it off, no, you see it's still, it's better to put it. Okay, uh, next sentence. Um, so the journey was easy at first because there wasn't much traffic at the time of day. But at midday, we needed to stop at a garage near Paris because, make sure, because there was a problem with the engine. The garage couldn't fix the car for 24 hours. So we needed a hotel for the night. The nearest, which uh, comparative have we used here? Which comparative? The uh, We're comparing an adjective. Is it the comparative adjective or the superlative adjective? It's got the EST, the first rule that we learned with the ER or the EST? The EST. The nearest hotel in all this place, that's what he's trying to say, was at Disneyland. We went there and it looks like it's a change of action and it was the best part of the holiday. Okay, okay so... Um, before we go on to a break, um, any questions with so because um, asking, requesting? We need a hotel for the night. We need it. Um, two is only if you're going somewhere. So we needed a hotel for tonight, like because. Four is like saying because. Or not because, we needed a hotel, like, uh, yeah, for this night. Like, for what? For this night. But two is more like we needed a hotel, um, so we went to the hotel or something like that. Two is going somewhere. If I want to say um, we needed a hotel, why? For the night. So for is like saying why? For the night. Oh, yeah, for. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to write a travel blog. So you know how you wrote, we read a travel blog before? You are going to write one now about a journey or place you visited. So think about these questions. Where were you? When was it? Who was there? And what happened? So before 
um, we go, you can upload it to Padlet. So you can read, a lot of people have written, um, if you go to 7, 7E, you'll see lots of other writings. So that's a good opportunity to read them and practice some English. So you'll see lots and lots, um, 7, so we did 7C last lesson. We're here, 7E, Hi. travel blog. Write a travel blog about a journey or place you visited on the holiday. Think about these questions. Where were you? What was it? So Paraguay, someone went to Gold Coast, Queensland. Um, somebody went here in South Australia, Thailand. Somebody went to Port Lincoln, which is also in South Australia. So you see the section, add comment. So we're just going to add them there and I'll correct it for you. But let's have a break. I think your minds need to rest a little. So we'll come back and we will create our own little travel story, just like the one that we read. Um, so we'll create our own little travel story. So remember to use the past tense because it's an action which already finished. So I went, we stayed there, we saw, I went with whoever. What happened? We we did this, we did that. So remember to use your past tense. And also you could try and use some comparative. You know, it was the best place I've ever seen. It was the most amazing um, experience I've ever had. It was the most um, beautiful thing. I, it, it was the worst experience of my life. It was a horrible, it was it was a, so much worse than my last experience. You can compare it or than my last trip. So don't just write a travel blog, but also try and compare it to another time when you went or to another place or talk about it being the most amazing place, the best, the most. You remember your comparative when we say it was the most, the best, um, it was cheaper, you know, then going somewhere else. It was a good um, holiday because it was cheaper um, than going somewhere else. So compare. Okay, so that's after. We'll come and check that after the break. And online, we'll have a break. I am. Is so. Oh, okay. So. So. Yes, is I am. That's right. S in Spanish, S O Y, but in Portuguese, S. O U Y S O U U yeah interesting so so in English <laughs> uh, like we looked at before so what we are doing is um uh I remember I used to have an Italian teacher and all the time allora allora every second she would say allora allora it was very annoying <laughs> very very annoying okay so what are we doing. We are going to be writing about our travel journeys. Remember the little travel blog, where have we been, where, with who. Now upload it onto Padlet. Or you can also upload it onto, um, I just made a post. You can add it to my Facebook page as well. So if you look at... Uh, if you go to Mindset, you'll see that there's a post. It says, write a short travel blog about a journey or place you visited um, on holiday. So just comment. You can upload it to Facebook if you already have Facebook. If not, not Facebook, then upload it to Padler. Um, but it's much more easier to find it here, the first post on uh, Mindset. It's exercise um, 11. Sorry, am I looking at the right one? No. It's exercise 4, yes. Exercise 4, page 89. Yep. Okay, so writing about your journeys. Remember, Facebook, upload it here, or Padlet, um, find the section. It's because there's starting to become a lot of writing on here. Sometimes it's hard to keep 
scrolling, scrolling, so it's much easier. Upload it here. And I'll come and check them in a moment and we will share. Remember to use your past simple and try and add comparative. Try and say, you know, it was the best, it was the worst, it was the most amazing, the most beautiful, the most perfect, the most unbelievable, the most craziest thing I've ever done, the most awesome, the most whatever. So there's lots of ways you can express how you feel, not just saying, I went here, I did this, I did that. But how did you feel as well about your experience? Your experience. Yeah. About a journey or place you visit. No, a place that you visited. So somewhere you went. It could be um, the beach. It could be um, another country. A place. Somewhere. Somewhere where you went. Okay. So we'll read them. We'll come back and read them in a moment. Um, but yes, so let's get writing. And online, uh, Clayton, Julian, Bivy, and Drez2. If you have Facebook, upload it to Facebook um, here. Where, 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 where? Where, where, where? No, no, no. If you have Facebook, Facebook. If not, Padlet. Yeah. Facebook. So Padlet. You remember? Yeah. Because it's starting to become many, many writing here. So uh, you'll find it on Padlet as well. And you can, if you finished early, read the other ones. 10 minutes. We don't want to spend that long. So 10 minutes. Okay. You're just saying your feet, your what happened, where were you, and expressing your feelings. Don't forget to add feelings. When you read something that someone's wrote, it's nice to see how they feel, not just what happened, where they went. But how did they feel? Personal experience. Okay, so we'll come back in a moment. Okay, so let's start looking at some of your writing. So we had share my screen. Let's start. Um, thank you, Jose. So let's start. So remember, Facebook, if you do have as the first option, if not, um, Padlet. So I'll start with Padlet. Uh, two months ago, I was with some friends. Is this yours, Edward? I was with a f some friends visiting a town. Oh. oh, no. Who wrote this one? Gua Guatape. Who, uh, Guatape? No? Guatape? Did anyone write this one? Okay, I'm not sure who wrote it, but let's correct it. Maybe. Yes, because she left. Okay, so two months ago, I was with some friends visiting a town called Guatape. Uh, if she wants, she could have put which. Guatape, which is located in Colombia, full stop. It is, so it is recognized with the Australian spelling, S-E-D. It is recognized by having giant stones similar to that of Brazil, full stop. It has many steps to get to the top. I might say there are. So you remember uh, I was teaching uh, someone before, there are many steps to get to the top, full stop. It took us 40 minutes to then observe the water dam that surrounded her. That's so beautiful. I think Valeria wrote that one. Might just add her name at the end there. That was beautiful. Valeria. Okay, Gustavo. About my last holiday, I can remember the most beautiful sea in Colombia. It was in San Andres. Full stop. That place is, is in San, San Andres, which is a better, which is better than Cartagena when I had my before holiday. So where I went before. I might say where I went before. 
So about my last holiday, I, uh, so for, so for my last holiday, I can remember the most beautiful sea in Colombia. It was in San Andres, which is better than Cartagena, where I went before. I went before. I felt so good there. I felt so good there. So I spent, so he should have spent. So I spent a lot of time with my family. It was great. Good. That was Gustavo. I think he had to leave before. So for my for my last holiday, I can remember the most beautiful sea in Colombia. It was in San Andres, which is better than Cartagena, where I went before. I felt so good there. So I spent a lot of time with my family. It was great. That's good. So that's Gustavo, and I'll write it. Bye. Okay, someone wrote um, the previous Sunday. We don't say the previous, we say last Sunday. So last Sunday, comma, I went to, I went for, so I went for a walk with a friend. I have here in Adelaide, full stop. We went to the Monado Safari Park Zoo. So I might put all capital letters because it's the name of a place. We went to the Monado Safari Park Zoo, which you don't need a comma after which, which is an hour from the city. And when we arrived there, and when we arrived, comma, there were too many people, full stop. The truth is, the truth is, it was super incredible. It was super incredible. Once inside, I saw many animals that I had never seen in person before, such as rhinos, giraffes, lions, etc. The only problem is that it was very hot and even though we were wearing light clothing the heat was unbearably unbearable so we drank a lot of water on the way back to Adelaide we had to go through a gas station to put so we say petrol station in Australia not gas station to put petrol why uh, that's what we say in Australia in America they say gas station we say petrol stations to put petrol in the car and since there was a and since there was a food place yeah. there and seeing that there was a food place there we stayed to eat there for a while and then we returned to the city good so i might just quickly make an um continue so monado zoo who went to monado zoo Oh, yeah, that was really good. So we say petrol station. Ah, did you go to the zoo? Oh, you went to the zoo. So we say petrol station, not gas station, because that's in America. Uh, really good. So last Sunday, I went for a walk with a friend I have here in Adelaide. We went to the Monado Safari Park. Now, you say I went for a walk. That means that you walked there. I don't think you walk to Safari Park because it's about four. It's about half an hour drive. You said I went for a walk with a friend. Yeah, but we went to the Monado Safari Park. Wh which one are you? Which is your? Are you, did you go for the walk or to the zoo? Yes. Yeah, so what? I wouldn't really say the first part. I would say last Sunday I went to the Monado Safari Park with a friend from Adelaide. The zoo is an hour. The zoo was an hour from the city. And when we arrived, 
there were too many people. The truth is it was super incredible. Once inside, I saw many animals that I had never seen in person before, such as rhinos, giraffes, lions, etc. The only problem is that it was very hot and even though we were wearing light clothing, the heat was unbearable, so we drank a lot of water. On the way back to Adelaide, we had to go through a petrol station to put petrol in the car. And seeing that there was a food place there, we stayed to eat for a while before returning to the city. Good. Uh, Santa Marta. Last year, I visited Santa Marta. Uh, actually, let me check Ronan because if you need to go. Um, yeah, this should be on the page. I think I just got to refresh. Um, okay. Ronan, in September, where's your capital letter for days of the week? Uh, for months? <laughs> I, I like how Diego was like, yeah, Ronan, you should have, you should know. So in <laughs> September, September, capital letter, That's days it. of the month. In September of 2023, I should be a capital. I know sometimes <laughs> your phone. <laughs> But be very careful. I had one of the most incredible experiences in Australia. I might put an exclamation mark because you're saying the most incredible experience. My bride, who had has lived in Adelaide for eight months, my bride, is that like your wife or my bride-to-be? My bride-to-be. That could be before, or my fiancé. So you could say fiance, and we spell it like that. So, uh, so you could say my bride to be. That means she's going to be my wife or my fiance. So I put it in brackets. So my bride to be, who has lived in Adelaide for eight months, took me to Gorge Wildlife Park. I know this to finally meet a kangaroo. Okay. Exclamation mark. Good, because you're saying. Finally, like it's with excitement, like finally. I had the pleasure to meet other lovely animals like lizards, snakes, camels. Oh, there's a camel there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm surprised. Oh, I'm surprised too. I have to go there. I know they have that. Um, is that big? I have to see the camel. When I, I went there maybe 10 years, five years ago. So there was no camel that time. And I have, uh, so I had the pleasure to meet other lovely animals like lizards, snakes, camels. And uh, you don't need to repeat the action. And to carry, and to carry, you don't need to repeat that same action, a koala. I loved, see, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what did you say? The eyes of koala is very small. Yes. Eucalyptus. Yes. Ah, you know, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. I loved seeing Amico. Ah, the golden lion tamarind. From which country is this one? A native Brazilian lion. A golden lion tamarind. Because is because it is a pretty animal. Uh, I don't know about saying pretty. Pretty just means beautiful. Do you mean that to say it's it's an um it's an I would say incredible because it's an it's an incredible animal. Um, is it almost in ex well because there's still some that is almost going into extinction in Brazil or has it already? There's no more in Brazil. Yeah. So let's read it again. Okay. So this was from Ronan. So in September, make sure you capitalize days of the month, days of the week, 
sorry, the na the months, days of the week. There's lots of other things. Cities, you capitalize names of people, mountains, oceans, names of buildings. Make sure that's all capitalized. So in September of 2023, comma, I had one of the most incredible experiences in Australia. My bride-to-be, or you could say my fiancé, who has lived in Adelaide for eight months, took me to Gorge Wildlife Park to find, it sounds like she was here before you. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, because that's what it sounds like, the way that you're writing. Okay, so she took me to Gorge Wildlife Park. So that's the name of a place, mm -hmm. so it's all capitalized. To finally meet a kangaroo. I had the pleasure, um, finally met a kangaroo. I would say not only that, but I had the pleasure to meet other lovely animals. Like, I might say amazing. Lovely is more like when you know a person and they're very sweet and kind and lovely. But an animal is more like an amazing, incredible, yeah, lovely is more for people. Awesome. Yeah. Darcy. Yes. It's not a lovely animal. Really. It was a lovely. Yeah, dog oh. Yes, oh. <laughs> love. I yeah. love my cat. Oh, oh the word not, love. Yes. yes. It's but to just, like, it's very lovely and I sweet. Think. It sounds more for a person. Yes. Because it's about a personality. It's it's lovely. Not I the not know. the verb love. Yeah, lovely animals. He, no, that's the verb to love. That's to different love. than lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just be careful. One is an action, the other one is a, an adjective about the noun. So not only that, but I had the pleasure to meet other amazing animals like lizards, snakes, camels, and to carry a koala. To meet and to carry a koala. I loved seeing... I would say the, the Miko Leo Dorado, the golden lion tamarind, because it is an incredible animal that is almost going into extinction in Brazil. Beautiful. I posted that back to you. So thank you for sharing that. And that's in Adelaide, uh, the Gorge Wildlife Park. Okay, let's have a look at uh, Wilder. I visited the Amazon in Colombia. Good. I see you started to fix it. So I visited the Amazon in Colombia with my wife. Full stop. It is a wonderful place surrounded by a lot of nature. We arrived by plane. Good. He's talking about transport. We arrived by plane. Then... We went by boat on the Amazon River to the hotel, to, I would say, to our hotel. We visited the indigenous community and the island of the Mikos. It was a wonderful experience. Good. I might put an exclamation mark. Good. Jose says... My last holiday was wonderful with my girlfriend at Disney at Disney World in California. No. Disney. Disney World. Yes. Disneyland. Which one, one did you go to? California. Yeah, that's what I said. In California, you said no. no Florida. Florida. Sorry. Yes. I said, I'm thinking Florida. <laughs> Yes, yes, Disney World in Florida. I meant to say Florida. My mind was thinking Florida. Okay, so my, my last holiday was wonderful. I might put my last holiday with... My last holiday with my girlfriend was wonderful. Full stop. We went to Disney World. I might say here in in Florida. The roller coasters were past were incredible because they were so fast. Because they were so fast. 
the Mickey Mouse Hotel. Yeah. Was that nearby? Was that at the resort? Okay, the Mickey Mouse Hotel at the resort, that means there at the place, was very colourful. How cool. Did they have like Mickey Mouse bed and lamps and everything? Wow. Yes. Another section. Um, That's so cool. Yes. So cool. In the hotel. So cool. Um, see you tomorrow, Ronan. Bye. So my last holiday with my girlfriend was wonderful. We went to Disney World in Florida. The roller coasters were incredible because they were so fast. The Mickey Mouse Hotel where we stayed, so you stayed there, where we stayed at the resort was very colourful. In the mornings, the food was very, was very varied. In the mornings... They had a variety of food. So, good using so. So, we ate everything. Nice. In the evening, the fireworks were, so don't forget to use past tense, the fireworks were incredible because, uh, because it felt magical. Yeah? So you kind of have to say something like that because it felt magical. All was super. Yeah, all was super. If you want, you can stop there. All was super. All was super. Or you could say super experience. It was a super experience. So, yeah, good. I sent that back to you. Fernando, I think Fernando left. But <laughs> we will check his. <laughs> See? He'll get a notification when I send him. So my trip to Pisco to... So I went to I went for a trip. So we can say I went for a trip to Pisco to know. We don't say I know. Now I know in Spanish and Portuguese you say that. We say to see, to visit. So don't say to know, say to see or visit. The so I went for a trip to Pisco to see the how do I say that? Guacachina. <laughs> That w which was which was in 2021. I went with my friends and my sister. Full stop. We did many things of extreme sports. Uh, we did many. See you tomorrow. We did many extreme sports. Such as skating on the sand, driving, all terrain, vehicles, and we also visited some wineries where Pisco, is that right? Pisco is made. Where Pisco, the traditional drink of Peru, is served among other things good so make sure you read all your um friends comments so it's good to help with the english okay min let's see min went to hong kong so let's have a look at min's last year i came to visit hong kong you don't need the word came. Last year, I visited Hong Kong, China. Full stop. It's a small island. So I might say last year I visited Hong Kong, China. It's a small island, but everything... It was a small island and everything was too expensive. All means of transportation were past were quite convenient, but everyone chose to walk. 
because mm -hmm. Hong Kong, yeah, because Hong Kong is so small. Wow, so you can just walk everywhere because it's very small, Hong Kong. I didn't know that. So let me start again. Last year, comma, I visited Hong Kong, China. It's a small island and everything was too expensive. All means of transportation were quite convenient, but everyone chose to walk because Hong Kong is a small island. Now, because I don't want to repeat information, see ya, Edward. Um, because I don't want to repeat information, I'm going to take off. Uh, that sentence here. Um, the places to visit were the places I visited were also quite diverse. You could go to the mountains to enjoy the panoramic view of Hong Kong. And you can also go to the sea to see the very high towers built right on the coast. I went with my daughter and at that time there was a big storm. So we had to leave earlier. Okay, so I might just, um, last year I visited Hong Kong. I might just put that everything was expensive a little bit near the end. Um, all means of transportation were quite convenient, but everyone chose to walk as Hong Kong is a small island. Um, everything was so expensive. The places I visited were also quite diverse. You can go to the mountains to enjoy the panoramic views of Hong Kong or you could go to the sea to see the very high towers built right on the coast. I went with my daughter, and at that time, there was a big storm, so we had to leave earlier. Oh, good. Good trip, but, yeah, that you had to leave. Come yeah. to me in bed, okay. Yes, I'm going. <laughs> so, is this one yours? Uh, yeah. More down? Yes. I need to this one? Yes. yes, I see. Okay. So, hi, my name is Diego. So, in December, I might start with in December. So, you don't need to, um, you can put your, your name at the end here. So, usually, only introduce yourself if you're saying, um, hi, my name is Diego and I'm from Brazil and I have been in Australia for, remember, like, introduction, but you don't need it. So in December 2023, I went to Arakahu. Yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, Arakaju. Uh, Arakaju. Well, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Natural. Arakaju in Brazil. Full stop. It, oh. it was my honeymoon and my first time flying. So... It was amazing. My wife and I, so we say my wife and I liked, so you got to remember your past action. My wife and I liked the resort where we stayed. This place, I would say the place. Place. No, the place was beautiful because yeah. it, Sorry. because it, was so you got to remember to use your path in front of the sea full stop tropical typical typical, typical uh food from the city a uh, typical what brazilian food no Tradi you mean traditional Tra uh, yes traditional um which country are you in in brazil so i would say traditional brazilian food Traditional Brazilian food from the city was very delicious. And the drinks were very good. I might put a full stop because I want to yeah, keep. This, this color, color, yeah. Color, 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 color. This, a drink is drinking, for example, this uh, drink is very delicious. Color. The drink is 
Very good. And the beautiful, beautiful pool. pool. So, because uh, it's a bit of traditional Brazilian food from the city, was very delicious. And the drinks were very good. The reason why I split that sentence, because that keeps one sentence about the food and drinks okay. and then start a new sentence the pool the the pool was beautiful the pool was beautiful the pool was also beautiful we had a lot of fun full stop we stayed for seven days sometimes yeah, we stayed for seven days, full stop. Full stop. Yeah, you got to remember a new sentence. Every sentence yes. has one piece of information. Sometimes I remember this moment for my... Unique. For me, unique. 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 Yes. So sometimes I remember this unique oh, moment. Unique. Oh. Yeah. Um... Sometimes, for example, mm. sometimes, oh, sometimes it's beautiful. Yeah, sometimes I, uh, we say reminiscent, reminisce. Oh. That means oh. like to remember. I know this is a hard word. This is a new word for you. Sometimes I reminisce about this unique reminisce. moment, this unique, I might say experience. I might put experience. Thanks, Diego. Reminisce. Reminiscence. Reminisce. Yes. So that means that means yeah, that means to remember, but it's like especially for a place yeah. or a moment. Sorry, a moment in your life. Yeah. So I wanted to pick this verb better than just remember because this verb is connected more to a special moment. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I picked this verb. So use this verb. Yes. Please. When when you're remembering a special moment in your life. Uh, for for example, my, my yes. party is my let's see. Yeah, yeah, your wedding day. Party marriage. Your wedding day, of course. So in December 2023, I went to Arahaju in Brazil. It was my honeymoon and my first time flying. So it was amazing. My wife and I liked the resort. My wife and I liked the resort where we stayed. The place was beautiful because it was in front of the sea. Okay. Traditional Brazilian food from the city was very delicious and the drinks were amazing and the drinks were good. The pool was also beautiful. We had a lot of fun. We stayed for seven days. Sometimes I reminisce, reminisce yeah, about this unique experience, this unique moment. Perfect. Thank you. So, Wilda, we did yours. Um, I might just take it off from here. So, you don't need to add it into Padlet, only Facebook or Padlet. So, um, Andre, uh, um, who wrote this one? Uh, and Andres, too. Uh, okay, at the end of the year, at the end of last year, are you still here, Andres? No? Okay. At the end of at the end of last year, I traveled <clears throat> with my whole family to a resort, I think to a resort in Salvador. There we we bathed. We bathed in the sea and pool and played sports there. And of course, a lot of, and of course, a lot of, what's, um, what's kachakwa? What's, what's kacha? Kachasa. What's this? Kachasa Typical drink from Brazil. Ah, right. and of course, we had a lot of cachaça, which, which is a traditional drink. drink from Brazil. Yes. From Brazil. But this, 
these different types, right? Yes. What what flavors? Uh, and Brez too, I think wrote this one. Ah, oh. nice lemon. Uh, this looks very nice. Oh, fresh, fresh, fresh drink. Very popular in Brazil. Kai, 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 P, P. Where's the P? <laughs> no, this one. Capelinha. 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 But where's the L? No L. Ice, cubo ice. Ah, yes, yes. Cachaça. Uh huh. Cachaça. Yes. Ah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is it like gin? Looks like it's gin. Yeah. Looks very similar. Gin. It's very strong. Yes. Yeah. This is more sweet. Yes, but be careful. Yes. Someone drinking. Ah, the juice is delicious. Yes. The moment you you feel. <laughs> okay. When I'm in Brazil, I will try this drink. So, thank you for sharing that. So, at the end of last year, I traveled with my whole family to a resort in Salvador. We bathed in the sea and pool and played sports there. And, of course, we had a lot of this, which is a traditional drink from Brazil. We stayed there for five days. Good. Uh, okay, next is... Um, Okay. Yes, <laughs> no worries. And see you tomorrow. Uh, who wrote this one? Okay, so I went to Pal. This is yours. Okay, I went to the Palmeiras Stadium, which is located in San Paulo, Brazil, with my friends in October of this year. Good. That's one very long sentence, but you did use comma. Palmeiras. Palmeiras. Palmeiras is a football team. Sorry? Palmeiras. It's called in Brazil King. Ah, King. Ah, oh, the King is this word. No, oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay, is a football team on that day, football team, which is located in Sao Paulo, Brazil, with my friends in October of this month, is a football team. On, on that day, we ate a snack before the match. And the result of the match, I'm going to put full stops to start new sentences. The result of the match was 0-0. Zero, zero. See you, Diego. See you tomorrow. Was 0-0. Zero, zero. No one won. <laughs> the time to get to the stadium. The time to get to the stadium was, you got to remember, it's an action which happened in the past, so was. The time to get to the stadium was approximately one hour by car. Good. So I went to the Palmeiras Stadium, which is located in San Paulo, Brazil, which uh, with my friends in October of this year. Palmeiras is a football team. Is it a um, yeah, one of Brazil? Soccer, right? Soccer team because we have different range. Well done. Football, yes. Sport. And in Australia, soccer. So, yes, is a soccer team. Is a Brazilian soccer team? Okay, so let's add is a Brazilian. Um, is a Brazilian soccer team. On that day, we ate a snack before the match. The result of the match was 0-0. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. The time yeah. to get to the stadium was approximately one hour by car. So go. No one won. Yeah. Come home. Okay. <laughs> oh it wasn't a good day. Um, let's see. Which one haven't we? Edward. I think I didn't check Edward, but he left. So last year... Comma. So remember these time phrases like last year, yesterday, last night, comma, don't forget. So last year, I visited Santa Marta in Colombia with my family. We went there to celebrate my son's 
Andres, Andres Davids. Is that the name of the child, Andres Davids? One, one, one name? One. Okay. To, to celebrate my sons, Andres David, my son, celebrate my son, uh, my son's birthday, birthday, as he likes swimming very much, but he got sick and the first night we couldn't leave the hotel. Yeah, but he got sick. So, I might say so, the first night we couldn't leave the hotel. That's Edward. Oh, how beautiful. So he went to San Marta for his son's birthday, but his son got sick on the first day. So they had to stay in the hotel until his son got better and then they could enjoy it. Um, Good. The next one, the safari, Gustavo. Might take it off because Gustavo is in Facebook. Uh, Valeria, I checked it. Ojalon. Okay, so that's everyone's um, Facebook, Diego. I think I did check. Let me re refresh. Um, okay, Ronan, Wilda. Gustavo, Jose, Fernando, Min. That's everyone. Okay, so that means we're finished, but we still have time. So let's go to the next page, page 90. So we're looking at, um, yeah, so if you remember, uh, always at the end of the unit, we watch a movie. So the final journey, remember this week, we've been talking about journeys. We've been talking about, if we remember, like uh, adjectives to describe the journey. The journey was long and difficult and amazing. So the final journey, I can see that there's a bear and there's a fish. There's some river or lake. And it says, in Alaska, the stock sockeye salmon swims up the river. It's a dangerous journey. So remember the adjective? dangerous it's a dangerous journey and in alaska we know where that is um, near the usa okay so that's our image so um let's have a look at some words before we watch the video so i have here um the words in bold that means in black so if i said when i sit in the sun my skin doesn't turn brown. It turns red. What does skin mean? Mm -hmm. My skin. <laughs> My skin. So, yes, skin is uh, number E. The skin, your skin is the outside part of a human or animal's body, the skin. So one E. Okay, number two, the water in this river is very shallow. What does shallow mean? No? Shallow means like low. So not very deep, it's like not much, it's low, not deep. One, uh, sorry, two D. I think we missed turn from number one. What does turn mean? It means to change. So you've got an F, if you just want to write the letter F above turn, skin was E, turn is F. And shallow is not deep. So, for example, you could say, um, how was the swimming pool? It was okay, but it wasn't very deep. Like it was shallow. Shallow means like, like this, but deep is like that. So shallow is like that. Deep is like that. So a baby's skin is very smooth. 
What does smooth mean? Exactly, not rough. So I know that there's an OU that sounds like an A and GH like an F. It wasn't rough. Same as the word tough, strong. Rough, tough. Uh, yeah. So make sure the pronunciation, rough. So that's what smooth is. It's nice to touch, not rough. See you, See you tomorrow. Italo. So 3C. Um, okay. How about the word, when an animal dies, its body decays. Its body breaks up and goes back into nature. So 4A. <clears throat> um, the chicken lays eggs. When a female bird, yep, pushes an egg from her body, lays. Okay, good. So some new action words there. Um, some of them were verbs like lays, decays. Some of them were adjectives, smooth, shallow. Nets, some of them were nouns, skin, and turn was a verb. So you had some words which were verbs, some were um, adjectives, and some were nouns. So I hope you can see that difference and you know what the word means. Okay, let's watch a video. Um, now, this is a very hard video because we need to watch it three times. So we might just watch it once because half of everyone's left. So we'll, we'll watch it tomorrow so everyone else can watch it. Um, but let's just watch the video. So what you're going to do is watch the video, but see which one happens first. But sometimes just watch the video. If you want, just watch it. Don't focus on the question um, because we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, so let's have a look. are born in these rivers, but they swim to the ocean. Then, at the end of their life, they return to the river and start their final journey hundreds of kilometers up the river. It can take weeks, and only one in every thousand salmon will finish it. At the beginning of the journey, these huge brown bears are bears feeding. If the salmon get past the bears, their bodies start to change. Over the next few weeks, its mouth grows longer, its skin turns red and becomes smooth. Spitters don't know why this happened. The sockeye salmon will run in the shallow water The males start to fight over the females.
the female salmon lay their eggs in the bottom of the river. Their and their bodies decay into the well and become the food for the next sound, which grow and start the journey again. Okay, let's watch one more time and now answer questions three. So try and think which happened first. Put a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These cold rivers are in Alaska. Their waters are full of the upper fish called sockeye salmon. The sockeye salmon are born in these rivers, but they swim to the ocean. Then, at the end of their life, they return to the river and start their final journey hundreds of kilometers up the river. It can take weeks, and only one in every thousand salmon will finish it. At the beginning of the journey, these huge brown birds are the next day. If the salmon get past the bears, their bodies start to change. Over the next few weeks, the head of the male salmon can see. Its mouth grows longer. Its skin turns red and becomes smooth. Scientists still don't know why this happened. The sockeye salmon arrive in the shallow water where they were born. The males start to fight over the females. Then the female son lay their eggs in the bottom of the river. Finally, the parents come, and their bodies decay into the river and become food for the next son, which grow and start the journey again. Okay, so um, what happened first? Yes, B. So we have um, the first thing that we saw in the video was that the stock, the sock eye salmon starts their journey up in the river. Oh, that one's for that's done that one for us. Salmon. Salmon. So the salmon, the L is silent. The L is silent. Salmon. Yep. Why? I don't know. The L is silent. Salmon. <laughs> it's just English, yeah. <laughs> that's just the rule of English. They want to make it silent. So that's the first one to happen. Number two, what did we see happen in the video? No, that's no, not number two. There's something before that. 
A, the fish tried to jump past the brown bears. So this, they're swimming in the river and they tried to pass the bear. Number three. So they try. So when you use the word try before the main action, we don't know if it if it's successful or not. They tried to jump. You know, I tried to see you, but I was so busy. I tried to do my homework, but I was very tired. I tried to do something. So they tr they're trying to jump past the brown bears, but some of them don't make it. What's number three? No, I know this one's a hard one. It's D. The male salmon changes its shape and color. So don't worry, it's a very hard exercise because you have to watch the video three, four times. Number four. The salmon arrives in the shallow water. The salmon. <laughs> Don't say the L. Sa men. Sa men. Salmon. Men. It's like an M I N. Salmon. Salmon. The salmon. <laughs> the salmon arrive in the shallow water. So shallow means it's not very deep. Number five. The male salmon fight. 5F. The male salmon fight. Number six. The female salmon lays her eggs. Number seven. The salmon die and decay. The salmon die and decay. Um, I reckon we should finish the exercise. So I know many people have missed that they left early, so we have to continue. Um, okay, number five. So now watch the video again and answer the questions. Which U.S. state are the rivers in? Have a look as well, not just read the question and answer, but have a look at the grammar to the question. So remember, you can start your questions with the five W's. You can start your question with the verb to be. You can start your question with do. You can start your question with the H. There's how many. So just take notice of how the structure of the questions are and then answer the question. So remember, do we say yes or no first? Do scientists know why this happens? Number five, yes, they do. No, they don't. So just have a look. So let's answer those questions from the video. So number five. <laughs> Are filled with a number of fish called sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon are born in these rivers, but they swim to the ocean. Then, at the end of their life, they return to the river and start their final journeys hundreds of kilometers up the river. Well, it can take weeks. And only one in every thousand salmon fish. At the beginning of the journey, these huge brown bears got the next day. If the salmon get past the bears, 
Then it body started changing. Over the next few weeks, the head of the metal sound turns green. Its mouth grows longer. Its skin turns red and becomes smooth. Scientists still don't know why this happens. The sockeye salmon are running in the shallow water where they were born. The males start to fight over the females. Then the female salmon lay their eggs in the bottom of the river. Finally, the parents die, and their bodies decay into the river and become food for the next salmon, which grow and start the journey again. Okay. Which U.S. state? Alaska. Alaska. Are the sockeye salmon born in the river or in the ocean? In the river. How many salmon finish the long journey? They get to the end, finish. Yes. In every, so you've got a sentence, you can say one in every thousand, or you can write it like this, one slash thousand. That means that's how we write it. Same like, you know, when I write your mark for the test? Yeah. So one in every thousand. What are the four changes to the male salmon? So we're looking at our adjectives because we want to describe what happens? The head turned greens. Skin. Yep. Skin. The skin. skin. Color. Yes. Changes color. Okay. Yeah. Color. Yep. The body. Yeah. The body grows larger or longer. Um, and the mouth grows bigger. The skin turns red and smooth. Okay. Yeah, I know. It looked scary at the end. I wouldn't want to eat it. It doesn't look good to eat. It's funny, true. This happens in Alaska. Amazing. Do scientists know why this happens? No, scientists still, so still means like until today, they still don't know why. No. Where were the salmon born? So where is about location. Where? Shallow waters. It means low waters, not, not deep, deep, shallow, low. You can say low or shallow. You can see the word low. That's the easy way to remember it. C-L-O-W, low waters. What do the males do in the shallow river? They fight over the females. That means they want the female. They fight over. Do you see any other? <laughs> That's right. Ding, ding, ring the bell. Fist no, fight. Fish fighter. Fish fighter. <laughs> yeah. Fish fighter. If you could say to someone, you fight like a fish. 
Okay, and uh, what do the females do? They lay eggs in the bottom of the river. So full sentences, they as the subject, because I don't want to repeat the female. I can say they, plural, lay eggs. That's an action. Where? In the bo bottom of the river. Why is it important for the parents' bodies to die and decay? Why? So when you have the question like why, you can um, start your answer with because or to action. So, for example, why did you, um, like, why did you come to Australia? To learn new things. So you can start your answer with to verb, only when someone asks you why. To see, to learn, to explore, to meet new people. Why? So why is it important for the parents' bodies to die and decay? To become food for the next salmon. Okay, interesting. So the other, the other people missed out on watching a nice video. Uh, we won't get to watch it again, um, but we will finish the exercise next lesson. And next lesson, we're going to be looking at the review. Um, so that's the end. We're going to be looking at the review um, and also uh, the review and then doing some role play. Usually we do it on Wednesdays, but we did a lot of writing today. So tomorrow we'll come up and do some presentation, group work, um, practice more of our speaking together. Hello. Yes. And then the test, as you know, on Friday. So... See you all tomorrow. I think everyone online, uh, online has gone. So good night. See you all tomorrow to continue then. Bye.